Hi, I'm Martin Hazy, Chief Executive Officer of Business SA, the Chamber of Commerce and Industry here in South Australia. And I'm with Kendall Crow, our Senior Policy Advisor here at Business SA. Kendall, welcome. Thank you, Martin. Great to see you, everyone. Yesterday, of course, Treasurer Rob Lucas handed down the state budget for the 21-22 financial year. Now, there are two sides of the ledger on the state budget for next financial year, and we're going to have a chat about both sides of the ledger. Kendall, 3.5% growth rate projected for the state of South Australia next financial year. Is it good? It's much better than they expected. What they were expecting was uh, a lot less. It was going to take a lot longer to get back into surplus. Um, but now they're actually expecting to get into surplus, albeit a small surplus, a lot sooner. So that was not bad. That's not bad at all. I think most South Australians would certainly welcome that. We also saw some kind of key investments into infrastructure projects, a few matters which Business SA has also been advocating for. But importantly, we did see the state government extend the for another 12 months, support for apprentices and trainees. That comes through two parts. One, through matched funding with the federal government, whereby an employer can actually re receive about $32,000 a year to take on an apprentice or a trainee over the next 12 months. And then, of course, also for employers, whereby they become then payroll tax exempt for those apprentices and trainees when they take them on. So I presume that's a good thing for employers. It is a good thing. Um, one thing though that we are a little disappointed in is if an employer, as you know, doesn't meet that $1.5 million threshold, then they're not privy to any savings. They don't get any benefit out of it and they're not eligible for this scheme. So what we'd like to see is some sort of scheme in place for those employers that don't need to pay payroll tax so then don't save anything anyway. It's a good point, and I will come back to you, Kendall, about a chat about the importance of kind of small to medium-sized business owners in South Australia, because as of course we know, they are the major employer in this state. We often hear the rhetoric that the government is the major employer in South Australia. Well, let me tell you, that is completely incorrect. The major employer in South Australia is collectively the SME community across this state. There's 50,000 employing businesses around South Australia in the city, metropolitan Adelaide, and right throughout our rural and regional economies. They collectively, surely, are the major employer in this state. That's right. And we were talking about it last night and saying, wouldn't it be good if each of those employers was given a leg up so that they could employ even if just one more person? That's 50,000 new jobs. So I think there is certainly something in that. Well, South Australia's got the highest unemployment rate in the nation at the moment. That's nothing to be proud of. But I think the bigger issue here is probably underemployment. Do you think that this budget really begins to address systemic underemployment? I think that's a really good question. And I think what this speaks to is, are we employing the same people over and over? Or do we have a whole cohort of people who would like jobs that can't get in the door? Um, I think that there's that joining up of the education, the skills, the employer, and, and even like our young people coming through, joining up with employers and working out where that, where that gap exists is really important. And I don't think we see that in the budget. In his speech when he delivered the budget in the lockdown at the Adelaide Convention Centre, Treasurer Lucas did speak about the downward trend on energy prices and the downward trend on water prices. Now, these are key input costs for businesses. What does this mean to the profitability of a small to medium sized enterprise in South Australia? Uh, look, I think that's a really good question and I think that this is probably one area where the business community will be pleased. If it brings down their costs, that's a great thing as we all know. Um, and I think in one of the budget papers it talked to an example of a nursery with their electricity, their water and their land tax values. Um, the other thing that is good about this is that it actually drives maybe more business into the more money into the business community because consumers out there in their houses are also saving money. By his own admission, Treasurer Lucas basically alludes to the fact that South Australia has a eye-watering level of debt. However, the good news is that we do return to surplus earlier than expected. Is that something which is good for the business community? I think it uh, gives reassurance to the business community that we're not in this position for a really, really long time, which I think if we thought about it a year ago, that might have been what everyone was thinking. Um, but going forward, there is a light at the end of the tunnel and I think that's very good. Um, I think that what the business community might like to have seen though is a bit more spending in their patch as opposed to just funnelling it into the other areas. 
So export growth is also a key driver of the state economy. And of course, South Australia has a number of trade offices around the world. And in yesterday's budget, it was announced there'd be another one. And this one's gonna be in Europe, uh, in Paris, in France. Uh, how important is the export economy to the growth of South Australia and to employment and prosperity? I think, uh, I think it's a great thing that they've opened that office or will be opening that office. And I think it links in with the uh, UK free trade agreement and the EU free trade agreement that's in play. Um, where I think it lets us down though is presuming that the business community will only build through exports. I think what we need to be considering is how else might that business uh, build if you've got a smaller to medium sized enterprise, how is it that you're going to build if you're not necessarily in the export market, this doesn't mean much to you. Yesterday, the Treasurer announced $4 million towards the extension of the Great State Voucher Program. Now, this is to support, I presume, Kendall, key industries like education, like tourism, like accommodation, like hospitality. A lot of these are very city-based industries who surely have been impacted probably even harder. Do you think it's going to hit the spot? The Great State Voucher Scheme is a great idea. We're hoping to see most of the vouchers funnel into the city. The CBD has been in pain for a long time. People working from home, international students not being around, people actually moving out of the city um, has caused a lot of problems for those businesses that are just hanging on by a fine thread at the moment. So hopefully that will see a lot of business back into the city. Prior to the release of this week's state budget, Business SA, of course, Kendall put forward a 13-point plan to Treasurer Rob Lucas to really underwrite the confidence and prosperity of the business community in South Australia. Were our prayers and requests answered by the Treasurer this week? It's a good question and I think unfortunately no they weren't. Um, we had our red pen out last night and we're going through them one by one and unfortunately we were striking out quite a few. Uh, the uh, spending in infrastructure did get up but that was not unexpected. Um, other than that though, unfortunately quite a few of the requests that we made, particularly around the circular economy, uh, just weren't there. It seems like on a macro level, this was a good budget for South Australia, but on a micro level in terms of, you know, the devil is in the detail in any budget of course, mm. is that does it really answer the needs of the SME owner across South Australia? I mean, as we were saying before, they're the major employer, they're the ones taking a risk, and in many ways, they are the ones who have borne the brunt of the seismic uncertainty over the last 12 months as a result of COVID-19. Do you think the small business community in South Australia have reason to be confident for the 21-22 financial year as a result of what the Treasurer handed down yesterday? I think the overall figures tell us that yes, they would be. I think that they should be quite uh, confident, like you say, with regard to the uh, budget coming back into surplus in a couple of years, I think that's very reassuring for the state. I think a lot of people were expecting their grandchildren to be paying off this budget. Uh, so in that respect, I think that's a really good sign. Um, where I think it falls short though, like you say, the devil's in the detail, when they go down into it, there's not a lot there for them individually. Um, I think there's a lot more that can be done to support the business owners who have taken a massive risk this last year. Um, for me, what I've noticed is businesses had to pivot, and I hate using that word, but they really had to pivot this last year to stay afloat. They had to be very, very clever and smart about the way they approach their business and unfortunately that hasn't been supported in the budget. If we had every SME owner more bullish about employing more people, we're going to address high unemployment, we're going to address underemployment and we're going to really drive that prosperity further, whether that's export or domestic sales, whatever it might be for the business owner. So we see that as very, very important. Let's also not forget, and credit where credit's due to the Treasurer, no new fees and taxes, which is a good thing, and they're also going to deliver a 3.5% economic growth for the state over the next 12 months. So thank you, everyone. We wish you well. We thank you for being members of Business SA, and we look forward to working with you very soon. Thank you, Kendall. Thanks.